Divine acquittal. You know, what a, the greatest gift. You talk about a free gift and a great gift to man, mankind. Because that acquittal, the word acquittal means um, you're forgiven and totally acceptable by the court, and it's the court of God, and God's the judge. And when judge, God says you're free, you made it. That's really something, really something. And it is free, except for one thing, of course, that he that was born, who, he that was sent in the image of God, that is to say Christ, that he paid for the price. And it was with his life, his flesh life, um, so that you could have that freedom simply by believing and believing from your heart, no doubt, don't need any doubters here, knowing that he was the Son of God. Open your books, if you would, to the fourth chapter of Romans. Seems like we've been hanging with Romans quite a bit, but <clears throat> I want, I want, there's one word within this that I want to nail, and that's justification. It's only used a couple of times, the total Greek word. <clears throat> and the meaning of it is just fantastic. It, uh, it truly is one of the greatest gifts. But to show you that from the beginning, God had a plan. And do you know something? You're, you're in that plan. You're part of it. A lot of people wonder, well, where am I in the Bible? <laughs> Your father wrote it. It's your family tree. Therefore, you should feel pretty close to it if you want to be blessed. Because it does have to do with your future, your past, everything. Pick it up if you would. Chapter 4, verse 13. Concerning the promise of God to his children. Verse 13 reads, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It was Abraham's faith when he was an old man, and yet he had been promised that his children would be as numerous as the sands of the sea. God said it. God promised it. That's the way it's going to be. All right? So, uh, the, in other words, the promise came because of Abraham's faith in God. You got it? Do you have faith in him? You sure can, because there's nothing, he, nothing is impossible with him. That makes your life so much better, so very much better, when you know that there, there are things that are impossible with you, but not with God. And you know what? He's your Father, and He loves you. He'll take care of you. Verse 14, For if they which are of the law be heirs, that is to say the natural seed of Israel, Faith is made void, and the promise made of non-effect. If it was only good for them through the law, you know, it would be not much good. You know why? Have you ever been able to live perfectly by the law of God? I don't think so. Therefore, you couldn't make it. But through faith, you can. It's possible. Why? It's a gift, a free gift. A promise from your heavenly Father. 15, because the law worketh wrath. The, the law worketh wrath from God because we make him angry occasionally. For where no law is, there is no transgression. In other words, the law is our governor. The law tells us when we're right and when we're wrong. And the law is good. It's man that's bad. Okay. Just like Paul would say, I always start out to do what's right, but it seems to me like, bless my heart, I always end up doing just the opposite. And you know, a lot of times you've had that happen in your life too. Good intentions, but the report wasn't all that good, all right? But that's the, that's the freedom and the blessedness of Christianity is God's promise through His Son, His Son that came at that time. Verse 16, Therefore, it is of faith 
that it might be by grace. By grace, is the, the word means free gift. That it may, it's by faith that it may be a free gift. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not just part of it. All the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. What does the word Abraham mean in the Hebrew tongue? Why can they say that? It means the father of many nations. It was God's promise that he would be the father of many nations. Why? Because through him would come the Savior, the Christ. And through him, would come the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who is over all nations, whether they like it or not. There'd be a lot of nations like to argue that point today. It wouldn't do them any good. That's the way it is. Because God spoke and things became what they are. And he opened that up so that not only through the law, in the actual seed of Abraham, but through adoption. That is to say, Abraham has both children that are heirs, but he also has spiritual children. Because through him and through Christ would come the father of all. I don't care who you are. And faith is what unlocks the door for you. Faith is... You know, love is kind of a wonderful thing, and it'll get you there, but faith opens the door, okay? It's the key. Verse 17, as it is written, I don't know, have you read it? As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. That's what Abraham means. What was his name before it was Abraham? It was Abram, and God changed it to Abraham so that this would be a reality. The promise would be fulfilled. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead. He can make the dead alive if he chooses. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. Do you know something? He can tell you the future. He knows the past. Our Father does. And quite frankly, he controls the future. And that's why we do have election whereby God can cause that future to come to pass as it's written. And this justification or acquittal took, it began a long, long, long time ago. Whereby there were certain people that he can manipulate and they can't say, well, I would have made it if you hadn't interfered. Because you see, they've already made it. They pay for their present sins, you betcha, big time. But they've already been justified. That is to say, acquitted. I'm talking about God's elect. But this basically so far opens to everyone. And that's what's so beautiful about Christianity. Abraham, the father of all, a blessing to all nations. That when he was too old to bear children, God said, your, your offspring is going to be as numerous as the stars of heaven and the sands of the sea. And Abraham believed him. <clears throat> Verse 18. Who, old Abraham, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, promised by God, so shall thy seed be numerous as the stars of heaven and sands of sea. And here he's a, a, an old man. Verse 19, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, which he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. She was 90. But beloved, God promised it. When God speaks it, that's exactly the way it is. Your father is able. And that's why these promises should be so meaningful to you. 
It's our roadmap to happiness. It's our roadmap to peace of mind. It's to know our Father's in charge and there's nothing impossible with Him. Verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Do you trust Him? Do you trust our Father? Hey, let me tell you something, friend. You can hang it all on Him. As long as you're doing your part, as long as you're not lazy, as long as you do your part, God will take up the slack. He sure will. The reason being, God doesn't like lazy people. You know why? Well, they're not. Very, God goes for fruit. And if something doesn't produce fruit, you know what he does with it? He jerks it out and throws it away. And that's, that's the way he's going to do a lot of people that don't produce fruit. That is to say that don't love him. Main thing he wants from people is their love. That's what he created us for. And when you love him, and, and, and when you do just a few righteous acts, it covers a multitude of sin on repentance. He loves it, makes his day. And when you make his day, he's going to make yours. You know, it doesn't take much to do his work. It's just a friendly greeting to somebody that might be down a little bit. You don't know how much weight that carries when the Holy Spirit is involved in it that they can hear that, how are you today? Good to see you. Really good to see you. That just, it goes a long way with some people. They don't hear that. Maybe they don't hear it at home. Because at home, maybe all they've got there is ratchet jaws, okay? And they love someone that has time to say, how are you? And mean it, you know, with their smile. Mean it, that people can tell. And that's, Real good work for God, okay. But Abraham believed. Old Abram being his first name. Man, I tell you what, whenever God came along and promised him all this, he always wanted a child. He had a good nephew, you know, old Lot. Lot was all right, but it wasn't a child. And, and, um, and he had even a good steward that kind of took care of his money and everything, but he didn't have a son. And do you know that even after that son was born, God told him to take him up to Mount Moriah, which is very near the place Christ was crucified, and said, crucify that boy, put him on the altar. And then God stopped his hand because God knew this is where he would sacrifice his son so that the gift would be free to you. And he provided for Abraham in the bush a ram, a lamb, that he was able to put on the altar instead of Isaac, through who all this would come. But he believed, and, he, and I'm going to tell you something. Why am I going emphasizing so clearly? You can also. You can have that faith. He will always keep his word. He will always do what is good for you. Verse 21, and being fully, I repeat, fully persuaded, not partly, not just a little bit. There's no such thing as believing a little bit. Fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. God keeps his word. Verse 22, and therefore it is imputed or, or counted, translated counted. It was counted to him for righteousness. In other words, that faith, that sure knowledge, that, that fully persuaded, that pleased your father, pleased him a lot. I don't know, do you give him pleasure like that in knowing beyond a doubt, fully persuaded that these promises of this word are accurate and true? 23. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed or counted to him. Then we might say, well, who? Who? Verse 24, but for us, that's you, but for you also, to whom it shall be imputed or counted, 
If, and now, now you know, there's what puts a lot of people right out of the saddle. They just can't understand that word IF. You know, they heard the promise and they said, I claim that, I sure claim it, and I claim it right now. Well, hey, finish it up. There's a condition. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. You've got to believe that. You know why? Our Father is not the God of the dead. Our Father is the God of the living. Abraham still lives. Isaac still lives. Do you know something? Satan, the only one ever sentenced to death, even he still lives. And will live until God has written and promised he's going to destroy him. That's in the lake of fire at the very end. God is not the God of the dead, but the living. And his promises are true, firm, and fast. Claim them and then meet the condition. Believe. Fully persuaded. No fooling around. No messing. Well, I just wonder if I should pray today. Well, don't. If you're, if you're going to wonder whether it'll do you any good to pray today, forget it. It's not going to help you one iota. Because you don't believe. That makes a big difference. Let me tell you something. You know, let's, let's get this down where the rubber meets the road. If you've got somebody you really care for, you know, that you're close to, and I don't mean necessarily even your mate, a friend, a really good friend, you know. And, and, you know what good friends are? That's friends you can put it all on. You know that's between you and them. And that's it. It's sewed up right there. And you trust them for that. Okay? And if they violate that, then your belief is shaken beyond repair. But that's the way God feels. Okay? He wants you to believe Him 100%. It's between you and Him, and He loves you for it. Don't let Him down by doubting or trying to half believe and get away with it. It won't work any more than it would with you and a good friend. You either are or you're not, period. Okay? So that's just natural. That puts it right down where the rubber meets the road, where we in flesh can feel His. Uh, feelings, because his feelings are just like ours. We're made in his image and, and the angels. Naturally, when you doubt, that hurts. It hurts a bunch. Okay? Now, verse 25, this is why we came here really sure. Not his, our justification. Justification is diakiosis in the Greek tongue. And it, it, it means divine acquittal. And do you know what an acquittal is? It means strike it, forget it. You're forgiven, it's over, it's done, it never happened. And, and you know who divine is? That's from God, it's His court. And it's erased when, when you put it in the name of Jesus Christ and ask that forgiveness. That's what he did on that cross. Though he had no offenses, then he gave that free gift so that you could have by your name totally erased. You have a clean place there. Acquitted. You're free. And enjoy life. Don't, and, and, and love your father. Because he's the one that made it possible. And he made it possible through Abraham. It was Old Testament all the way down through. That the Savior would come. That these events would happen. That's a real special word. Justification. You're justified. You're a Christian. Well, does that mean I'm perfect? No, I'm sorry. That's why he died on the cross was for not his justification, not his acquittal, but yours. And you know something? Be honest with yourself. We need it. But what a free gift. What a wonderful thing to know that the highest court, not the Supreme Court of this nation, the highest court in the heavens 
and the chief judge is our father. And he says, you're acquitted. You believe, did you see, get the condition, if, if you believe upon him, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord from the dead, do you believe on him? Well, I believe on Jesus, but do you believe on the one that did it? They're one and the same, actually. And that's a big step for some people. And if I feel you put it on the shelf, leave it there for a while. But not guilty, forgiven, my child, you have a new start in life. That's what it's all about, justified. That's what's beautiful about the Savior. You know something, do you know what he came to this earth for? He didn't come to this earth to hobnob with goody-goody two-shoes people, okay? Holy rollers. Most of those people are self-righteous hypocrites anyway. He came to save sinners. That's what he came for. He came to save that that was lost. And don't marvel, you all know the parable, if he had a hundred sheep, do you think he would worry about the 99 if one went astray? No way, not him, not your father, not the Savior. He would go after the one that was lost. That's the love, that's the acquittal that he has in him. Totally forgiven. And the price was paid. It's a free gift, as, as it's stated um, uh, in, in this particular verse. A free gift, certainly, but at an awesome price. Okay, an awesome price. Okay, having done that, let's, let's uh, go on over, if we may, to... Now, we'll continue right on in chapter 5 there just a little bit, okay? The wind blew my Bible a page, and I got confused there for a minute. But I, that's the way I was flying airplanes. I was never, never lost. I've been confused for an hour or two at a time. Never lost, okay? All right, everybody's with us. Chapter 5, verse 1, continued the thought. Verse 1, therefore... Being justified by faith. Now you got that. Wear it now well. You know what it means. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And let me assure you, there is no other way. It's got to be, though God is your Father, and He's the one that promises, and He's the one that raises the dead, you still have to go through the Savior. He paid the price. And um, being justified by faith, uh, well, if I'm, if I'm of the tribe of Israel, doesn't that mean I'll be saved? Ain't no way, friend. That's not what it said, and that's not what it meant. It's through faith. Verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Do you hope for something you haven't even seen? But if you believe totally, you know it's there anyway. You don't have to wonder. You can believe. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Now that's kind of a step for a stepper. Well, I don't know if I enjoy troubles or not. Bring it on Satan. Come on down where the rubber meets the road. I have power over you in the same name, Jesus Christ. I'll take you on any time. That's the attitude you want to have, beloved. Tribulations for God is a beautiful thing. You can cut it. You're a can-do type Christian. You're not, uh, you don't play church. You get it done. Okay. Glory is... In tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. That's endurance. Hey, wear him down. Uh, and I, I thank our Father that Satan's not that difficult to wear down. 
All you got to do is say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, order negativity out of your family, out of your life, and be done with it. And tribulation work with patience, verse 4, and patience, that's to say endurance, listen to these, and endurance experience. Do you know what experience is? That's character. Can do character. Boy, it builds that character where you know a Christian when you see one. And experience, that's to say character, hope. That's confidence. I hope it'll happen. That's confidence in the fact that it will. You can count it. Verse 5, And hope maketh not ashamed. You'll never be disappointed, beloved, if, you've got, if you develop that patience. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. Not with help, given unto us. Us who? Those that believe. That's a guarantee that he goes with you. That Holy Spirit goes with you. He knows when you're in trouble. He knows when there's tribulation there. And do you know what? I, I'm, this, this may seem sacrilegious to some, but the Holy Spirit doesn't say, just sit down over there and take it easy. I'm going to take care of this for you. Okay. That's what some people imagine him saying. What he says is, go get them, tiger. <laughs> take names and kick dragon. I'm with you. Okay. That's what he says, you know. But you have people that will say, I never studied in my life, but the Holy Spirit's going to help me deliver this message where you wouldn't want to hear it, okay? You would not, that's not the way God works. But there are a lot of people that preach that. What a waste of time. Because it's man's knowledge, not God's. And I'm not doubting anybody. I'm not talking anybody down or anything else that's, it's just the way the old cracker crumbles, okay? God love doesn't like lazy people, and, and not wanting to work means what? It's kind of not that difficult to figure out, okay? So, continuing then with, uh, let's see, verse 15, but not... Nevertheless, okay, we're going to skip to the 13th verse, okay? Let's skip down to about the 13th verse. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed or counted when there is no law. That's why when you're ignorant, ignorant or innocent of something, so be it. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgressions, who is the figure of him that was to come. I mean, we're all in the same image. But Adam brought sin into the world, and guess what Christ brought into the world? We just read it. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. That's what we're talking about, that free gift, acquittal. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, that love of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many through the Holy Spirit. It saves many. It changes lives. It lets you know why you're in this world. And not as it was by one that sinned, that's to say Adam, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. There it is again. Acquittal. Free acquittal on believing and knowing. You know, it's really quite simple to say, well, that sounds like a salvation message to me. Boy, is it. And it doesn't hurt you to cover it every once in a while. To know the full meaning of justification, which is to say from the manuscripts, diakiosis. Meaning acquittal from God himself. Made free, a fresh start in life. How refreshing it is to be free and enjoy the free gift. 
And again, I hate to say it, but I don't hate to say it, but it cost Christ an awesome price, but he loves to share it with you. For if, uh, 17, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, that's to say Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one, Jesus Christ. Do you? You know, um, when you carry him, he carries you. And when you carry the Holy Spirit, he witnesses for and through you. You don't even have to say anything. Your smile does it. We'll say it, okay, in many cases. I have known a few people that their smile wouldn't influence, and they really had the Holy Spirit, but they just didn't have a smile there. But they sure had some good ways about them, okay? So uh, there are many, many different gifts. 18, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. In other words, it's there. You're, you're going to be condemned by the law. Well, what, what is exactly does that mean? Thou shalt not steal. Well, go ahead and steal something and see how you're condemned, all right? If they, especially if they catch you. If they don't catch you, you're going to be looking over your shoulder. I wonder if anybody saw me. I can't sleep good at night. You know, it's condemnation. In other words, God knows, okay? And God doesn't forget. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. That's not just living in the flesh. That's eternal life. That justification, that acquittal. Yeah, I know you do wrong occasionally. We all do. We all mess up at times. Even with the best of intentions. And and, um, and that justification, that acquittal, do you realize it comes from the very throne? That it comes from God when you ask for it? Just like that, he is faithful to his promise. If you believe, if you believe. Now, you might say, well, can I be sure? Well, what do you think when Christ was in the tomb they had crucified him. The flesh gave up the spirit. And while he was in the tomb, he still, as it is written in St. Peter chapter 1, I'm sorry, book 1, chapter 3, verses 18 and 19, he went to the prisoners all the way back to Noah, all of them that had sinned, and gave them the same opportunity you have today to repent and to partake of that same acquittal all the way back to then. Why? God loves his children. He does, and he loves you. I know, you know, you know sometimes people know themselves so well, they say, God couldn't possibly love me. Well, he does. He may not love what you do, but he sure loves you. He created, you know, there's not another soul like yours. Your fingerprints are different than anyone else's. Your DNA is. You're unique. God wanted someone just like you to love and to share with. And so it is. One more verse. For, uh, no, that was, that was uh, for, uh, well, I'll read it again. For as uh, by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. And so it is that Christ in obeying and showing us. Do you know why he went into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan? So that you would know Satan uses scripture? Because that's all that, you know, and isn't it amazing that the first preaching Jesus did was to Satan? It's amazing, isn't it? That's where he started. Right after baptism, he started preaching right down there in the wilderness to Satan. And Satan preaching right back in his face, scripture for scripture, only Satan was lying like a dog, twisting it just enough to throw the whole thing out of balance. And he will in your life if you listen to him. Acquittal, Christ came. 
to see that we had that acquittal. Now, I told you earlier that there were certain people. Turn on over to chapter 8 in conclusion. Chapter 8. There are certain people that that acquittal was handed out to just a little bit earlier. And it's important. And this in no way inhibits acquittal by faith of anyone, whoever, wherever, and so ever that repents. But there is something a little different that God calls upon. It's just the saints, there's a dock, the set aside ones. That's what the word means. Does that mean they're better than anybody else? No, it doesn't. It's just that they started a little quicker. Chapter 8, the great book of Romans, verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And, and in verse 26, do you know what it says there concerning you? Likewise the Spirit also keepeth, helpeth our infirmities. That's your weakness. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. You, you don't know the word well enough to be right 100% of the time. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings. That means a sigh. You know better than that. Okay, which cannot be uttered. He intercedes in your life if you're one of his elect. Do you know why? Because of justification. He will not do that with someone with free will. They, unless they ask him. But there are people, he just moves them. They may not even know why they're there. He moves them. According, not your plan, his. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called. I said volunteered. I said called according to his purpose, not yours, his purpose. 29, for whom he did foreknow, that means from before. Well, when was before? First earth age. He also did predestinate. He gave them a purpose to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, that it could come to pass that he would be similar. His election would be similar, would have the unction to know truth when they heard it and understand. Verse 30, moreover, here's why we came here, sharpen up for me. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, that means gave a purpose, them he also called, not volunteered, called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Diakio, the prime of diakiosis. Acquittal. When? When he foreknew him. Therefore, the acquittal is in effect for God's elect. And again, I emphasize right in the middle of the verse, that doesn't mean if you mess up. Who he gives much to, he expects more. Okay, so you mess up and he's going he's to make you clean your boots, okay? Going to keep stuff in order. And whom he justified, that is to say, acquitted. Them he also glorified. God's election. What can we say then? 32. Uh, 31, rather. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who? I say, who can be against us? No one. For all things are possible with our Father. Well, I just like to get on a worry trip every once in a while. Oh, you do. Well, poor baby. You know, it, it, to live in this generation and to have that attitude is, uh, uh, well, maybe it's cute. I don't know, but it's not necessary. He takes care of business. I, I want to go to one more place. I said we're going there and closing. That's God's elect. Go to Galatians. I can't resist myself. Galatians. 
right before Ephesians, if I can get there. Galatians chapter 2. And let's settle in about verse 16. Let's talk about acquittal. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16, and it reads, Knowing that a man is not justified, there's the prime of the word we were talking about, by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we... Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified, acquitted by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. The acquittal, it can't be done by law. And you know, I I know that may upset some people, but I'm sorry, we break laws, we do. Well, brother, you don't understand it. My church once saved, always saved. And we can't sin after that. Ooh, make way in the great lake of fire. (laughs) Somebody is on their way. Okay, There, There are so many, the law covers so many things. And we're just not perfect. It takes that faith. You know, and you know something? God understands that. He understands you, that you fall short. Don't ever, well, I just am ashamed of what I did, and I'm ashamed to go tell him. Hey, he already knows. All right, you're, you're not keeping something from him. He knows, and he's waiting for you to say, Father, forgive me. I really did it this time. And like any parent will, come here, child, come here. Let me put my arms around you. You're apologizing like that. I forgive you, and I want you to go, and I want you to be happy. That's why I created you, to be happy. You're acquitted. You're free. It's a free gift. Because, you see, he that sits on the throne and forgives you through the Son If you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. He paid the price Himself for you. That's how much He loves you. So trust Him when you're justified, acquitted. Let Him know you love Him for it and thank Him. You know, when the highest court in the heavens and earth acquits you, what more could you ask for? You're free. You got it made. And you have his blessings that come along with it, all of his promises. 17. But if we but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, uh-oh. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. In other words, if I go back and say, you've got to go by the law totally, then I was, I was mistaken in telling you to follow Christ instead of doing the law every bit of it, you know, to live by it. I would be wrong. Well, God forbid he wasn't. 19. For I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. In other words... I am so close to the Holy Spirit and I live such as I can that the law doesn't mean anything to me. I'm going to, I'm going to fulfill it. That's what Paul is saying, but that's a big step. Verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. What a love story. How how much more love could you want than to have someone love you that much that he gave himself for you? Do you know why? He knew you couldn't cut it by yourself, that you needed his love and you needed his help. And he's more than willing to give it. He sure is. 
In conclusion, verse 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, never. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. But it, doesn't, it comes by faith. Righteousness in loving Him, in serving Him, and in fulfilling that belief. You know, it makes it so easy to be a Christian that you can understand why Christianity is a reality and not a religion. Because it is your life. He did it for you. He did it for your family. So that your family can have peace of mind. Contentment. Fulfillment. And love each other. Because He is there. Every time you set the table. Don't forget to talk to Him. He's as, he was, as if He was even there. And thank Him. Because he loved you enough that he gave himself that the high judge could say you're innocent. You're not guilty. You're free. Come on into the eternity. How precious our Father is. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for the word. Thank you, Father, for your plan. Not ours, yours, Father. Thank you for the plan of salvation. And thank you for forgiving us when we slide, Father, when we slip. Thank you, Father, for that. And we always love you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen. Timothy 4.4, 4, is this an, a, an analogy or is it to be taken literally? Because there are some foods you said we should stay away from. Well, um, again, Melissa... You say Timothy 4, 4. Go back to Timothy 4, 3, okay? And in Timothy 4, 3, it says, Never judge someone in their food that was created by God to be received. I mean, that's the qualifier. There are some animals that God did not create to be received. And that's where you're kind of getting hung up just a little bit. Just go back to the beginning of the subject and carry it all the way through, bringing the object forward as well. Don't let someone judge you in marriage and don't let somebody judge you in what you eat. In your heart, you know, even if you had a bad marriage, if you have repented before God for any part you might have had in causing it to fail, you're clean. You're free. Don't let anyone judge you. That's what he's saying. And likewise in food that God has created to be partaken of, don't let somebody judge you in that. Take it, okay? I have to still add, though, the lessons we've just had from Romans. Um, if it goes to the depth of something offered to an idol, which to us an idol is nothing, it's a chunk of wood or something. You know, if there's a young, weak person there in truth, then be careful. But otherwise, what, uh, what Timothy, 1 Timothy 4, 3 means is that that God created to be partaken of. My question is this, I cannot find anything in the Strong's about the ethnos. I may have a poor copy of the Strong's. I know it is also found in Revelation, but I cannot find it there either. May God bless you and your staff for the wonderful work you have done in reaching the lost sheep with God's word. Well, thank you. You, you are saying, when you say ethnos, you are uh, saying a Greek word, okay? The Strong's is made to convert English into Greek. So therefore, you have to take the English word for ethnos, which is nations. The English word nations. Uh, let me guide you through. Go to um, the word nations, plural, in your Strong's Concordance. Go to the 20th chapter of Revelation. You mentioned Revelation. I'm going to help you. I'm and in verse, what is it, chapter 21, verses 20 through 24, you'll find nations mentioned in one of those verses. And take that back to 
1480 something, somewhere along in there, in the Greek, and you will have ethnos, okay? But that's the Greek word for ethnic, where our word ethnic comes from, meaning ethnic peoples. Okay, hope that